Hello, this is uh, Ivan, November Oscar to Charlie Whiskey, with a few remarks regarding the Sanjian WFR28 uh, receiver, internet enabled uh, radio receiver. I've used this radio for a couple of weeks now. I love it. I, I, um, I think it's a great uh, product. And I wanted to share some uh, 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 about some of the detail that I found out about this radio, what I like about it, uh, what I'm uh, a little concerned about. And uh, uh, overall, I, like I said, I, uh, I've enjoyed using the radio. I plan to uh, keep it and, and enjoy it for a while. It has uh, quite, a, quite a few features. And uh, I, uh, I'll be happy to uh, uh, share those in a, in a form of a review. So uh, as, uh, to get us started, this is a uh, radio that um, has an FM receiver and an integrated internet radio receiver. Together with that, uh, it can also receive um, music from a local uh, server if you are using Wi-Fi. And uh, it can also, of course, read uh, MP, uh, MP3 files if you're sticking a USB drive or any other type of drive. So let's uh, get started. The radio is, uh, first of all, it comes with an external uh, supply, power supply, and uh, there it is. As you can see, 7.5 volts at 1.6 amp. Uh, now that's a little odd. Uh, it can use 4D batteries. Those 4D batteries will add up to um, 7 volts on a, on a good day and then they will drop. So uh, uh, anyway, it, uh, ideally, I would have loved to see uh, a radio powered by five volts. That's more universal and you can uh, use external uh, power power banks that, that you find anywhere these days. But this is uh, 7.5 volts, 1.6 amps. The 1.6 amps seems a little odd to me. That That's quite high uh, for, for, I think, I guess for the circuit that's in there. I. I, I would make a bet that uh, with better technology you can cut that consumption in half, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> 7.5 volts and 1.6 amps of, uh, of draw. So accordingly, the radio uses uh, four um, D size batteries in there. Um, and I'll get to that part in a minute. Uh, but the, uh, the radio can be powered by 4D batteries. I'm guessing that they didn't use double A's because, <laughs> because of that 1.6 amp uh, figure there, that draw. And uh, I did get a set of batteries. And uh, they, it works well off of batteries as well. Now what you're seeing here, the blinking light is telling me that the batteries are charging. Once they are charged, this will turn solid green. Now, that's about as far as it goes. Uh, you will not get a warning or anything related to the batteries until um, you know, uh, a, a warning sign regarding a low battery. Therefore, if you are planning to use the radio on, bat on battery power um, extensively, maybe you need to uh, get an external battery charger, although the, uh, as uh, the batteries are inside, they're also charging uh, right now. And um, the thinking behind that is um, if this power supply provides 1.66 amps or let's say 2 amps of power and the radio is drawing 1.6, basically you, you are charging the batteries but you're trickle charging them. And uh, like I said, if I were to use the battery um, power extensively, I would not leave it up to them to s just sit in the radio. I would use an external charger. It will tell me the, uh, the status. Uh, how much power remaining I have, and a few other uh, important things. But I think the way if for occasional use, just drop the batteries in there and uh, it will work well. For example, if I need to move the radio from one room to another, or upstairs to downstairs, well, if you do not have these batteries, you unplug it, you lose all that. You go uh, plug in the radio and it has to reboot from the beginning. Uh, therefore, the battery, uh, the batteries come in handy uh, in this case. and. Uh, so far, so good. It's uh, it's worked well. Well, so that's the power supply. Um, as you can see, we have uh, what do we have? As, as you would expect, which uh, actually is quite handy. Um, 
it's uh, I have low light here but <laughs> it's a little difficult to focus but there's auxiliary in that is great I love that feature uh, I may be feeding audio from another source from my phone from uh, who knows what uh, from another player uh, it, it, it never hurts to have an auxiliary um, uh, line in and um, there's a line out and there's headphones it's nice that they separated the line out and the headphones that's uh, that that's always a helpful feature uh, if they were combined then uh, you 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 anytime you want to get audio out you you'll have a little bit of uh, tweaking to do to to get it right but having those separated I think that's uh, that's good all right well, let's look at the display. So the display, the, 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 what you're seeing there is January 27th, and this is, of course, the internationally accepted 27118. Uh, if you're used to, uh, if you live in the U.S. And, and, and you're used to that being the other way around, I did not find an option for that to change. It's, it would be something easy uh, to incorporate in a future update of the software. I did not see it. Uh, who knows? Maybe by the time I uh, I finish this review, <laughs> it may be a feature that gets rolled out because the radio is capable of uh, updating its uh, its software. But I think right now I did not see any provision to change the date format. Uh, it would be nice and, and uh, considering that it costs a minimal amount of effort to incorporate that in the, in the menu structure. Turning the radio on, the radio will uh, switch to the last mode that it was used. If, if you used it last to listen to an FM station, it will do that. And if you listen, even if you used it to um, listen to an internet radio station, it will do that as well. This works well. Uh, I mean, that's what you would normally expect, probably. The only time there's a little glitch with that is if you used um, the radio in internet mode last, and um, turn it on and there's no internet or you moved and or the internet is not available then then the radio starts hunting and it's, it's it, it just uh, creates a, a little bit of a problem the radio doesn't know what to do but let's uh, one thing at a time uh, once you plug it in and and uh, um, I will unplug it from power and plug it back in right now Uh, and here we are plugging it in and the reason for that is uh, just to see the boot time of the radio it uh, because it is a microprocessor there uh, it will require I, I, I my guess would be about 20 seconds to boot up So it's uh, um, yeah, mostly uh, mostly ready. So let's turn it on, and we will start with uh, FM mode. FM mode works very well, and uh, I think it's uh, it's great to have that on the radio. Although this was probably designed just as a as an internet uh, radio. So I'm turning it on, and uh, it will go to the station that I use uh, listed last. Uh, tuned to 91.3, that's the local NPR station. And class starts every morning at 8 a.m. The audio is, in, is uh, nice and rich. <laughs> I can't be too mad because I put myself in this predicament. I was being greedy. I said I wanted me a fatter paycheck, so I decided to work Monday through Friday. Damaris needs the money. She has to pay for the SAT, the ACT. Um, what do I not quite like about it? She's also Tuning saving up for is college not, itself. Uh, continuous. Remember, Damaris is still 17. <laughs> What do I not like about the tuning feature? Uh, as you can see, scrolling through frequencies uh, means there's an interruption in the sound. And it takes between one and two seconds to tune to the new frequency. That, of course, is uh, when you do manual tuning. Uh, there are some uh, provisions there to uh, scan and save. Uh, and then the stations. envelopes start trickling in, and they're small. You can save stations, and uh, the, st the number of uh, the five presets here that, that we see, 
they are for FM mode only in this case. If I switch to internet, I will have another five presets. The same buttons will work differently in another mode. So that's FM. The sensitivity is pretty decent. It, it's not, of course, a DX machine for hunting um, distant stations. Uh, this is uh, for normal everyday listening like, like, like you would listen to in a, in a car, just a general casual use radio. Uh, from that point of view, it works well. The RDS uh, uh, locks in. It, it, it's great. It's great to have that feature. Uh, there is no AM, of course, um, but if you do have internet, then uh, pretty much any AM station that uh, that you'd be looking for will probably have a signal out there on the internet. And um, that's my uh, that's my view here for uh, FM mode. There is no provision for an external antenna, just uh, what the radio comes with, and uh, that's what you get. Uh, and uh, the majority of my of the features that I will look at are related to uh, internet, so I'll get to that in a in a moment. So the uh, the system settings will allow you to uh, well, they have a whole menu for network configuration that will allow you to connect to a local hotspot. I see that the radio was designed with using a uh, a home type of hotspot in mind, basically whatever the internet hotspot is that you use, the router that you use at home, uh, that that's the primary way the radio was designed. The tuning features, the um, uh, the ability to to do a one click connection to your router, etc. So in that type of situation, it works great. I connected to my home router and uh, never had any problems uh, with it reconnecting. Uh, every time I, I, I do it, uh, I, I turn it on, it, it finds the signal right away and connects, and uh, not a problem at all. Now, um, I took the radio on one of my trips. I travel a lot on business, and um, of course, what, what do you see that the um, hotels and other public places now um, have, frequently have, internet hotspots? And uh, uh, let's say that you're covered from that point of view, but then um, the authentication that they uh, use is pretty much always browser-based, and this radio would not be able to connect that. I could not connect to my hotel internet. Um, I could not connect to um, public hotspots where uh, a browser-based authentication is, uh, is required. At, at an air it could be at an airport, it could be uh, many other uh, hotspots. So that's uh, just be aware, and that of course is uh, because there's no there's no browser right here. I mean, one day this radio could turn into uh, uh, replacing the little LCD with a um, LED with a with a full featured uh, browser and, and, and a little basically a little, little uh, tablet with a processor there. Uh, that's a possibility. Of course, then the uh, the power draw will be a, a lot higher as well. And it comes with a lot of other uh, uh, problems attached to it. But uh, the way it is right now, you won't be able to connect to those uh, public uh, hotspots. Now, uh, of course, my idea in that case was, well, let me try using my uh, phone hotspot feature. Uh, of course, I established a connection, not a problem at all. Good, stable internet. The radio worked flawlessly. However, whenever I used the um, connection from my phone and I restarted the radio, the radio was not always able to reconnect to my phone hotspot. Uh, although that, that reconnect sequence works perfectly and, and never had any problems at home uh, while using the hotspot on my phone, uh, a few times it did not, the radio was not able to reconnect. It was searching for a signal. Uh, one time it, it even uh, rebooted uh, itself. I don't know why and how, but um, connecting to, to that hotspot seemed to um, create some conflicts in there and uh, I'm hoping that that could get addressed uh, at some point. But once you are connected to the internet, you're ready to go with as far as internet radio. And uh, there's a feature there to um, update the, the software. Since I have the radio, I have not seen any updates. I took it out of the box, there were no available updates. Um, I can suggest a few things, a few updates that can be added. And uh, hopefully, I don't know if the manufacturer is interested in doing that. Or possibly, this seems like a radio where, I mean, theoretically, you can really update the, the entire radio. A lot of features could really be updated, not just the software. Okay, so I'll get to I'll get to that uh, point in a minute. We covered FM. Let's look at the um, what and how it works with uh, with internet. Looking at the modes, 
I can select between um, FM, auxiliary, uh, FM radio, uh, my music, and I'm guessing that that will be USB driven. Uh, Spotify, and Spotify is just a, a, one of those uh, big marketers of uh, music streaming services that try to establish special relationship with the device manufacturers to kind of push their uh, their subscriptions. I've had I've had the subscriptions on and off. I don't currently have a Spotify uh, subscription. But so going to the mode, back to the mode, internet radio. Let's do that. And uh, it will try to connect to the last station that I listened to, and this is from Columbus, uh, Ohio. Most stations load within uh, uh, within a second, and every now and then you may see a, a case where that doesn't work uh, smoothly. Smoothly, I don't know if that's truly much to do with with the radio itself. It dep well, I think for the most part, more than anything else, it depends on the on the audio stream of, uh, of that particular uh, radio station. Uh, but when it works, the radio uh, loads it and, and, and start playing within a fraction of a second. It's never, it hardly ever been the case where it will hunt for that and, and try to buffer and uh, establish the, uh, uh, the rate that's necessary to, um, to start playing the audio signal. Um, when, when that happens, I'm sure it wasn't because of the radio. It's, it's just the, um, the bit rate of uh, of the audio was, was too low and the radio needed to buffer. Um, well, what can I say about the, uh, the internet uh, part of this? Uh, let, let's get started with that. I didn't mention that when you you have a when you scroll, you ha you have a choice of the different buttons. Of course, they're pretty self-explanatory of what each one does. Um, now let's look at this. The the only way to to scroll through values is by way. Of the, of the tuning knob here. And the OK or the selection is really pushing that knob in. Um, it would have been easier for me if there was a button here to, to help me do that because then I have to switch scroll side front. Um, I think from a usability point of view it would have been easier if that was a, a button here on the front. But um, And here's another example. Um, the radio is pretty good at loading and, um, that's because that information goes to a centralized server I think at, uh, at uh, Sanjin uses uh, an internet specific dedicated internet server uh, that the radio calls in order to do all that um, what, what are the features here internet uh, location and a few times it get most of the time it gets it right and sometimes it will be a little bit off and that's because the the internet uh, um, provider that, that I use would sometimes uh, route and, and, and show a signal in such a way that um, I'm in one location and another radio thinks I'm in another. Uh, most of the time the, the um, internet location is uh, is correct. That's no fault of the radio. Of course, it doesn't have a GPS chip. It picks it up from uh, the internet signal. When it's uh, right, it's right. When it's wrong, it's wrong. Um, and that's how we would do the local stations. It has the, uh, the ability to pick up subsets of um, uh, basically HD carriers from different radio stations and those are just the, the HD secondary uh, programming that stations carry. Uh, many times these secondary audio feeds of the stations in the uh, HD stations are commercial free um, so it's, it's great to have them. Now when you scroll of course uh, the way the stations are indexed that, that's a little uh, it's a little tough unless you know what you're looking for uh, it basically will be kind of like a little bit in uh, <laughs> Uh, it, 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 you're, you're doing it in the dark. Um, you have to scroll through a lot of values or find what uh, you need. I haven't done much searching and uh, I'm doing podcasts. Um, let me uh, look at something else. Added stations. The radio manual will tell you that you can add stations, um, and you can. 
uh, mostly through the internet uh, browser, which connects uh, to to basically the radio's ID on the audio on the internet audio server. The uh, the challenge there is, um, if you want to add a new station, you need to you provide the basic information of the station, but you also need to provide the actual uh, address of the audio feed. Uh, if you look at the, if, if I find a station ABC, um, most of the time, the the address of the audio feed will be disguised and, and, and buried somewhere in there. So unless you know how to find it within the um, the, the code of, of the website itself you will not be able to add that, that radio station. It will not take a website. It needs the actual address of the audio stream. And uh, so sometimes you may not even be able to uh, figure it out uh, on your own. And sometimes it, it's, it's pretty plain and simple to do. Uh, so it's a great ability to add signals and, and the server that Sanjin use also allows you to do that online just so they add that to their directory. Just be aware that uh, it, it's not it's not always simple to, to do that. Uh, maybe if you send a suggestion to them, they have a better way of figuring out uh, what the actual audio stream uh, is. But if you just happen uh, to come across a radio station and want to add it, um, you you need to be able to figure out where the uh, what the audio stream uh, address is. Okay. So back at the menu, help, uh, favorites, etc. And of course, the the big uh, part here will be under the, uh, the stations menu. Go by uh, location, genre, uh, search station, popular station, new stations. Um, so if I do, um, uh, let's see, location goes by continent and then country. Search is uh, is is pretty nice. It takes a little bit of use to uh, get used to because of the uh, because of course there's no keyboard and that. But I've searched for stations. It, it works pretty. It works very well actually. It's, it's it's great to have. Great feature to have. I don't know how to make it more efficient without a keyboard. I think the way it is is you just have to. There's a little bit of scrolling involved, but um, when you get to it, you get to it. In the um, the radio has no problem finding what you search for, and I searched for things and it found things. Um, one of the uh, features that I do not see on the radio is to search for radio stations um, by language. Uh, I don't know, genre is, is pretty good, but it, it's too general. And that's one of the flaws of uh, generally searching for stations on the internet. There's 15,000 stations here. Uh, that's great. But then you get overwhelmed. Uh, for example, I, I love, uh, I, or I loved listening to just cultural and uh, just current affairs and news programs when there were lots and lots of those on shortwave. So those are mostly gone. But a lot of uh, programs are still being produced. And um, if I want to say, well, let me search for something like that, it would be difficult because if I, I can search for talk and news, it will not tell me which ones are in English, which ones are not. So what I did was um, I uh, did a little bit of research and uh, compiled a list of uh, radio stations that broadcast in English over the internet that, that show their uh, their audio streams also on the internet but they broadcast in English their licensed radio stations from uh, various countries and I came up with a list believe it or not over 100 countries send audio radio stations in English uh, over the internet and I put those together put that list together and I limited to um, five maximum five per, per country and that's uh, to remove the uh, overwhelming presence of UK or US or Australian or Canadian stations, basically there's thousands of those, but you don't want to bury everything else inside those. So I picked maximum per country. And uh, what I did was uh, put those up on a, on a website as well. It's called english-radio.com. And feel free to visit it and use that, that directory that I have. I will keep it updated as, as much as I can. 
But there's some very interesting stations there. Hong Kong's Radio 3 always gives you uh, popular, uh, interesting programming. Uh, so does BBC 4. It's just an endless variety there from 100 different countries. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of countries, they do have programming in English. Uh, it, it's centered around music. But uh, it still gives you a little flavor of, of the local culture. And uh, I use that. And the reason I brought this up is I imported that list in, uh, in this radio. And I will show you how that works. I go to my favorites, and uh, here's my list by country. Uh, well, it starts with the Z, that's fine. Z, Z uh, and we go down. Um, if a country is in this list, um, what that's telling me is that, that, that I do have a radio station in English from that country that I can, uh, that I can listen to. For example, uh, what should I pick? Um, well, let's pick, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's difficult. Uh, for example, for Hong Kong, I have RTHK3. Uh, I think there's uh, a couple of more uh, radio stations there that broadcast in English, but uh, that's what I have. Uh, so let's go to, um, let's go to Japan. Uh, I only picked a couple of uh, radio stations from, uh, I mean, from from Jamaica, uh, well, of course there's a, a lot more of those and I try to give preference to uh, stations that uh, have news and current affairs or anything related that, that will give you a character, uh, the, uh, the local character. And uh, if I scroll to even more of those, um, yeah, we'll get to, um, let's say, uh, what should I pick? You know, these countries that, that have broadcasts in, in Sierra, Sierra Leone will have, um, we'll have Capo Radio. I can do, um, I can do um, Singapore, I know has a few. Power 98, 98 Live has uh, um, news and other features and, and other programming. So I, I use that quite a bit because it filters everything uh, with, uh, down to English language. And, and uh, otherwise, the, it, it's good to have 15,000 radio stations, but it's just too overwhelming, and, and I can't find my way around it. And, and uh, like I said, feel free to use that directory. It's uh, english-radio.com, and uh, importing it in, in uh, the radio is pretty easy if you connect to the uh, internet server of, of the radio, and they have uh, very simple instructions of uh, how to do that. Um, let's see what else. Mention it, but this is the, the I, this is the U.S. model of, of the radio, and what's missing? What you would say? Well, why is it not there? It does not receive a U.S. HD radio signals. The reason is, in the United States, the HD radio or FM digital radio uses a proprietary uh, chip that's needed, and um, it would have probably added who knows twenty thirty dollars to the to the cost of the radio. And uh, I think they decided not to include that. That's been uh, one of the main obstacles of why uh, HD or FM digital radio is not very popular in the United States. It still has a long way to go to gain uh, mass recognition. So it's not present in this radio. I think if you buy versions of this radio for, for Europe or some other parts of the world, uh, I think they have a different designation at the end. And you will also see that it can do uh, DAB and uh, DAB plus. So this this is the U.S. Um, this is the U.S. version of uh, of the radio. Now the top of the radio does have the ability to plug in an external um, USB uh, drive. Uh, I imagine that there, there those that are really mini drives they they come with pretty high capacity these days, and you can use those uh, and to basically put it there permanently as opposed to something that you plug in, use, and then plug out. Uh, there are the, the other kind that, that are pretty tiny and, and with more than enough capacity. So I have not done that yet, but uh, then I'm not a big fan of uh, downloaded and saved music, so that's one of the reasons I haven't done it. Uh, ideally, I would have loved this radio to, to get a, an update it would make it a little thinner and leaner and switch from D batteries to uh, AA batteries. 